Hey, what is up YouTube? And welcome to the first in a series of five videos where we're gonna talk about VFX fundamentals. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and make sure the bell's turned on for notifications so you never miss out on any new videos I put out, especially if you're a newbie and you're trying to learn more and you're trying to get really into visual effects. These are great videos for you to start with. In this video, we're gonna be talking about rotoscoping. And although rotoscoping is something that's pretty simple to do, I feel like a lot of people don't know how to do it in the most efficient way. There's no real wrong way to rotoscope. They're just faster ways of doing it. So with that said, for this video, I shot a really silly and arguably meme-worthy video. Uh, kind of cringy. Cue it. So we're gonna use that video for the sake of this tutorial and we're gonna go from there. In this particular installment, I'm gonna be using After Effects to do a lot of the work and Mocha. I will be making a version of this video for Nuke users as well. So please don't feel like you guys are getting left out. I just feel like the majority of you are on After Effects so I feel like it'd be helpful to start there. With that said, let's jump right into it. Okay, we're here in the office and we're about to get into it, but before I do, I wanna briefly mention that there are programs specifically for rotoscoping that I'm not gonna mention in this video. The big one is Silhouette. Silhouette is used for heavy rotoscoping and is used predominantly in stereoscopic conversion. I'm not gonna cover it in this video because A, I've never used it myself, and B, most visual effects artists won't be using Silhouette on their day-to-day -day rotoscoping. Most of us predominantly use Mocha. Another thing I wanna mention for this video is this isn't going to be a Mocha tutorial video. This is gonna be a video to show you how to rotoscope efficiently and different tips and tricks for rotoscoping. If you wanna learn more about Mocha specifically, Imagineer Systems has a great YouTube channel with a ton of information that I'll link in the description down below. I'll also link a ton of other things that I find may be useful for people trying to learn rotoscoping. I'm also gonna put a download link to that weird, cringy video that I shot that I'm gonna be using as an example for this video in the link below. So just make sure to grab it if you want something to practice on. All right, let's jump on in. All right, so here we are in After Effects and I've already gone ahead and loaded up our practice footage here. And it's just that footage of me bobbing my head around and doing this odd cockatoo thing. But anyway, I wanted to keep the movement simple because it doesn't take a lot to demonstrate efficiency with rotoscoping. Like I said in the intro of this video, there are a ton of ways to rotoscope, but there are definitely more efficient ways to do it than others. Like most things in visual effects, there are many ways to do things, but the more efficient you can be, especially with these tedious tasks, the more time that you can spend on creative things, and by proxy, that'll make your work a lot more fun to do. Since this is our first tutorial together, I wanted to briefly talk about organization and file structure. Whether it's an After Effects or any other program that you use, being organized is super important. Whether you work by yourself or you work in a large studio where you have to pass on a project to another artist, when you have these giant compositions and these big projects, if you're organized and consistent and deliberate with naming layers, it's going to be very easy for another artist to pick up your work and be able to understand what's going on. If you're really messy and you don't name your layers or your sources and everything is just this footage or fire one, you're never going to be able to find anything and people are going to hate you for it. It's also a big sign of professionalism and experience when you're constantly in the habit of naming your stuff and being organized. This file structure right here, I learned at the last company that I worked at and it works pretty well for me. I use it on everything that I do on my day to day stuff. It's pretty straightforward and easy. And if I had to pass this on to another artist, they should have no problem finding what they need to find. So for starters, there are two ways to draw splines. The first way is for simple shapes where you just draw the outline of the shape and move on from there. The second way is for more complex shapes and you draw several simpler splines that make up the whole overall shape. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So to roto my face, since this is a simple shape, so we'll go ahead and take the pen tool and draw it around my head. Uh, I'm doing this pretty rough just for the sake of the tutorial. I'm not focusing on those extra sections. Also, for some reason, I'm not sure why After Effects chooses the worst color to represent a mask on a light video. Always does, not sure why. So that's the first way people draw shapes on objects. The other way is to separate this out. So uh, one shape could be for the overall head, the other shapes could be for the ears, etc. So this will be shape number one my left ear. This will be shape number two, the right ear. And then this will be shape number three, which is the overall head. So down here, I want to make sure that I label everything. If we were rotoing a more complex shape other than something like my head, for instance, separating the different parts of the shape out into smaller, easier shapes makes it easier to move things around. I'm sure that a lot of you, especially getting started, you make like a ton of little points 
around an object and then very quickly it becomes a real big mess when you try to move it across frames. Don't do that. The number one rule with rotoscoping is to use as few points as possible in your shape over as few keyframes as possible over time to achieve the most natural and realistic roto. So I'm going to go over all the different ways you can roto. I'm going to start from the most tedious time consuming techniques all the way up to the fastest. The first method that most people use, especially when they're getting started, is what I've already touched on, which is drawing one big shape and then going frame by frame by frame to change it. Let's say the task is to rotoscope my face so that we can put it on some other funny background, right? What most people typically end up doing is they click on the clip, they select the pen tool, they trace the face, and they go frame by frame by frame, and they rotoscope the face. There are a few problems with that. The big one is that your lines are going to be really, really jittery because they're constantly changing every frame. So if you're rotoscoping frame by frame by frame by frame, it's going to take you an eternity to rotoscope something as simple as my head, for example. If you absolutely have to rotoscope manually, there are two ways to go about it to be more efficient. The first way is to watch the clip back, and any time there's a directional change in your object, you know that that's the point where you have to adjust the shape. So in this particular case, I'm going to scrub through the footage and I see that my face stops right about there. So I know that that's my first point to adjust the shape of the mask. So I'll go through and I'll move it there. I'm not going to adjust it perfectly just for the sake of this example. And I'll keep scrubbing forward and right there my face stops again. So I'll move my shape here and I'll put it in the correct position, yada yada. And what's happening here is the keyframes are interpolating the difference. So I would only have to go, you know, maybe one frame here and adjust how fast it's moving or go to this frame here and adjust how fast it's moving. So suddenly I have five keyframes that are covering everything that I need to cover as opposed to going frame by frame by frame, you know, and filling all that stuff in. It's a lot faster and you can move quickly that way. The other technique for manual rotoscoping is to do rotoscoping in increments. So it's similar to the previous method, except you're going every 10 frames or every 20 frames and adjusting the mask that way. The idea here is keyframing as little as possible and changing the mask as little as possible over time. Not only is this faster, but it gives you the cleanest rotoscope that you can get because you're not changing the shape over and over and over again every frame. Now there's a good reason I haven't really demonstrated that here is because it'll take me forever and it'd be a very boring tutorial. Nobody wants to see that. So as you can see, method one was pretty slow and not very efficient. How can we do this faster? Well, the answer is with tracking. You can utilize tracking in rotoscoping to get a much more organic roto and a much quicker roto. Let me show you what I mean. For method two, we're gonna be using Mocha. Now, because we're in After Effects, we're gonna be using Mocha for After Effects, but if you're in a different compositing program, you can use Mocha Pro, which gives you a lot more export options for your splines. If you wanna know more about Mocha Pro, links are in the description below. So to get your footage into Mocha and start the second method, what you have to do is select your clip, go to Animation, Track in Mocha AE. So since our task is to rotoscope my face, the first thing that we need to do is track a feature on the face that we can then attach our rotospline to. So what I'm gonna do is draw a shape around my eyebrows and my nose as well, since these features don't really move that much and don't change. Let me get some of the hat as well here. Move that up there. This is a pretty simple example and the face isn't distorting or twisting in any way. So the only parameters we need checked are translation scale and rotation, which can be found down here in the motion section. I'm gonna go ahead and label our layer face track, make sure it's selected, and I'm gonna track forward. So Mocha's gonna go through, do its thing, it's gonna track my face. Once that track is done, I'm gonna show you guys what we do with that information. So now that I've got my face tracked, as you can see it's sticking on there pretty well. I can scrub through and it's on my face. How do we use this data to rotoscope? Well, the first thing that we want to do is draw a new spline around the areas that we're trying to rotoscope. So I'm going to draw my different shapes. So this one's going to be my, uh, my face shape. Again, I'm doing this rough for the sake of the tutorial. I also don't want this tutorial to be super long, so I'm just kind of going as fast as I can here. Okay. So this is my, my shape and you can also like adjust the handles and uh, bend them out a little bit so that you're getting everything that you need. You can highlight m many of them and adjust it that way. Uh, I'm going to draw another shape for my ear right here. That kind of rhymes. It's funny. Again, not sticking to it. Okay. That's one ear and I'm going to draw another shape for this ear. 
Now, these are uh, maybe a few more points than I'd like, but again, just doing them really quickly. Make sure that you label your layers. So I'm going to go over here to the layers panel, and this will be right ear, left ear, and head. Now, you want to make sure these cogs are off because you're not trying to track those things. You're just trying to use them to rotoscope. I want to select each of these layers and down here there's a drop down for link to track. I want to link them to my face track. I'm going to do that for each one of these layers. Face track. Face track. So now what's going to happen if I scrub through those shapes are going to stick to my track. And what I want to do now is go shape by shape and adjust them anytime they fall off where they're supposed to be. So for example, I'll start here, I'll play this forward, and I can already see the head shape is falling off. So I want to select it, move it into place, scrub forward, it fell off again. I'm gonna move it into place again. This stuff can be a little lower. So that fits. And you just do this till you've gone through the entire clip for all the shapes. So I'm gonna stop it right here and when I'm done, I'll, uh, I'll check in with you guys. So now that we've rotoscoped everything in Mocha, we need to get it into our compositor of choice. Since in this tutorial we're using After Effects, let's see how to do that. I'm gonna select all of my shape layers. I'm gonna go down to Export Shape Data and uh, I can do either all selected layers or all visible layers depending on how you wanna export. Doesn't really matter, uh, just do whatever is better for your project. So there are two ways you can use this shape data in After Effects. You can use it on the clip itself, like this. You select the clip, go to Edit, Paste Mocha Mask, and boom, all our roto is uh, where it needs to be on our face. Or you can break these shapes up and paste them on solids so you have a little bit more versatility. Here's how you do that. I'm gonna create a new solid for each one of these uh, shapes. So we'll do head. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate my base twice and put it underneath each of these. So this is what the timeline will look like. I wanna select each of my base layers and change the track mat to alpha mat. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna use the alpha information from the white solids that we just made, which will house all our roto information so that we can do other things to the mats. And then we're gonna go into Mocha. We're gonna select each of these individually and export them out to their appropriate layers. Selected layer, copy to clipboard, select the mat head go to edit, paste mocha mask, and we're gonna do that again for the left ear. Uh, export shape data, copy to clipboard, left ear is up here, edit, paste mocha mask, boom, and then we're gonna get the right ear information, export shape data, copy to clipboard, paste. So now we get the same stuff, but everything is sort of separated out. Again, you wanna make sure that you label your layers so everybody knows exactly what's going on. So these two methods are more or less the same, but the reason I prefer method three to method two is because when you work with mats, you get a little bit more versatility and it somewhat mimics the way that you would work with node-based compositors. The only problem is it makes your comps a lot bigger and a lot messier if you're not good at keeping track of your labeling and your organization. Also, if you need to change anything with your rotoscoping, you're gonna have to go into Mocha, adjust it from there, re-export it, and repaste it onto your layers that way. When you work in big pipelines, this is gonna be more or less the workflow, at least in After Effects. In Nuke, the workflow is pretty similar, but you don't have to make as much copies and the comps are a lot cleaner. You guys will definitely see what I mean when I make my Roto for Nuke tutorial. But like I said, this is the workflow you're predominantly gonna see because then you can save your Mocha project and pass it on to somebody else and they can keep working on it from there. You can combine multiple projects and uh, it's just better for a larger scale pipeline. So there's another way to do all of this stuff within After Effects without having to jump to Mocha. I personally like to do all my tracking in Mocha and do my rotoscoping in After Effects, but this version is kind of the same thing. You're just using the tracker tools in After Effects to achieve what you want to achieve. The way you do this is by selecting your clip, going to the tracker tab, and doing track motion. You want to make sure that rotation and scale are checked. Is track your entire clip forward. So it's gonna go ahead and do what it is we need to do. If it falls off, just go back and adjust your track. You're then gonna create a new null object. But essentially what you're gonna do is after you track your footage, you're gonna paste all that data onto a null. 
You're gonna make sure your target is that null. Then you're gonna apply over X and Y and hit okay. And boom, all that tracking data is then applied to your null. And if we scrub through here, you can see that the null is perfectly attached to the face. Now the next thing you do is create a new solid. Boom, attach it to that null. Make sure the solid is over your base or the thing you wanna roto. Make sure that the track mat is set to alpha mat. And then you wanna select the shape layer that you just made and draw your roto shapes the same way that you would in Mocha. And boom, it's tracked on there. And all you would have to do is set a keyframe for your masks and go forward a couple of frames and just adjust it that way. So again, you're achieving something similar that you would in Mocha without having to ever go into Mocha. I use this method a lot myself because I'm not really handing off my Mocha projects, but if I were working in an environment where other artists needed to take my stuff, then I would definitely, definitely rotoscope in Mocha. But this is a nice little alternative if for whatever reason you have After Effects and can't access Mocha, at least you know that there are faster ways to do it without having to jump to that program. All right guys, so there you have it. Different ways to rotoscope more efficiently, how to rotoscope in general. I really hope that it was helpful. I'm not the best at describing things and since this is my first tutorial, I'm sure a lot of it may have been convoluted or hard to follow. If that is the case, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to do my best to, to answer any questions you may have. I'm also gonna make the rotoscoping for Nuke video. Um, so any comments or questions that I can address for that video, I'll definitely put it in there. I'm trying to help as many people with fundamentals as I can, and this is the first time that I'm actually doing any type of YouTube training. So any feedback that can help me make these better, please let me know, because I wanna make content that people can use over and over again for years to come. If you like this video, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Look at that sunset, though. Ooh.